is Captain Teotokou. I am currently a naval officer. I graduated a PhD in computer engineering. Currently, I have been transferred uh, to work with a Defense Technology Institute, which is developing guided missiles for in Thailand. So I, um, I had my bachelor's degree in electrical and computer engineering from the University of Missouri, Columbia, in the United States. And after that, I had uh, my master's at the same university. So in this case, uh, it's, it's the rocket head inside the guidance system. So it has uh, uh, one single purpose. And then, so uh, pretty much everything is, is done procedurally acquiring sensor data and then do some processing and then after that uh, we send a signal to control actuators uh, for example the fans so everything is it's done step by step so and so for that part it's pretty much structural from top down however in uh, in the simulation and the visualization in the, the, the windows programming part we have to do a lot of uh, object-oriented uh, programming because we have to have an object that uh, deals with uh, simulation at the same time uh, communicate to, to flight simulator for visualization and there are some other things going on in, in the background. In that case, it's pretty much object-oriented. Usually, I have to talk in the morning, I have to talk with my colleagues, and then we have to decide what kind of work we are going to do together. And then after that, we have to do all the programming work. And uh, at the last part of the day, we usually have to spend time on the documentation for uh, what we've done uh, for the whole day. So that's, that's pretty much uh, what we do as programmers. In my section, I work for is the guidance system, so which involve a lot of algorithms, uh, embedded systems, and a lot of programming simulation. What we have to do is you have to simulate the system, the guidance, well, including the whole uh, missile, the rocket itself, uh, within the computer and with, with MATLAB, and mm -hmm. also also using uh, Visual Studio to for visualization. So we, we write, we, we did simulation, we, we do with simulation in, in MATLAB, and then uh, if it works well, the algorithm is verified, then we transfer the, well, report the, the algorithm into uh, Visual Studio or C-Sharp. We use C-Sharp because it's easy to develop, we decide to use C sharp instead of uh, the other tools such as C plus plus because it's, it's much uh, faster to, to develop. And then the C sharp is used for visualization because it's going to be connected to uh, Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator, and we use uh, Microsoft uh, Flight, Flight Sim uh, to visualize. Well, it's it's good to have the program running with graphs and everything, but for the big weights, you know, those big people, mm -hmm. they, they kind of, sometimes they don't understand what's going on. So it's easier for them to, to look at uh, the simulation and see the rocket goes you know, from the launcher to the target. But we are not that far yet, but we, we're just starting. When you decide to take uh, this career path, you have basically you have to know pretty much everything. I mean, when you are young, you're a junior, a junior programmer. You have to learn a lot of things. And you have to learn about uh, the language, uh, how to uh, interact with the hardware, and uh, interact with another computer or maybe another system. Because that, that everything co have to communicate one way or another. You have to communicate sometimes with the hardware, maybe with uh, another machine or something, something like that. It, it, and then also there are 
a lot of uh, languages you have to learn, you have to study, and so to be a good programmer, you have to know all all these aspects. You have a lot of time to learn. To learn. A good thing is that right now uh, you don't really have to rewrite everything from scratch. You have a lot of libraries. You have a lot of uh, maybe open source code, and you can just learn from it. And you see that okay, maybe this is good. Just use it. You don't try to reinvent uh, the wheel. Okay, but but you have to to understand. You have to, you. It is very important to understand how that code, the section of the code that it takes from somewhere, and you have to get your program. You have to know the basic how it works. Otherwise, you won't. If you don't understand and you use it, it's going to be a big trouble when you have to you know debug your program. Once you get older, you have you've gained more experiences, then you you will try to get the whole picture. And then when you have to become a software engineer, you decide, okay, you decide on what to do, how you are going to structure your your whole big project. A software engineer have to decide, well, it will first thing work pretty much with a system analyst to decide uh, what the user wants, uh, what the client wants, how uh, this process is going to be done, how it is done, and uh, what the output that the clients want, this kind of thing. And then work with them and allocate, well, design, design a program. What you need. According to the requirements, chop down the whole project into small pieces and allocate uh, the resources, in this case uh, probably uh, junior programmers, to do the thing that uh, you're supposed to do. It is probably my preference because I love being a programmer. The only thing, I'm not sure whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, is that being a programmer makes me think all the time, like how these things work. Well, when you assign a project, it, you can't really get rid of it from your head. It just when you drive, you think, "How is this going to be, that be, be done? How is this going to be broken down, and so on and so forth?" It's challenging, and that's why you can't uh, get rid of it. Uh, as a team. You have to learn to accept others' ideas, thoughts, abilities, because people are different. Maybe you can figure this out so quickly, but not your colleagues. Or maybe it could be the other way around. The thing is, you have to work together somehow. You have to try to adjust, because some people are faster than the others in, in programming. In, in terms of abstract thinking, and uh, it's not if you're good, you're not always good, you know. Because sometimes you work on this problem, you think it is right. If you think uh, this algorithm or this way is the most efficient, uh, the most correct way, but maybe your friends they have a who could be slower than you are. But uh, maybe he has a better way to solve the same problem. So you have to share, learn to share, and be patient. And I read at least one or two hours in the morning. So I have to uh, go online first thing in the morning. <laughs> it's Kind of obsession, an obsession. I think. I think it, it depends on you know in the individual. But uh, I think so. It's the first thing I do. I go. Uh, I have uh, the RSS feed uh, on my Google Reader, so I go there and then I read. But um, not only about programming or gadgets or electronics. I I reach. I, I, I read. Uh, a lot more things like photography or Japan, I mean my favorite country, Europe, everything I can find that interests me.
have to learn to accept others' ideas, thought, abilities. Because people are different. Maybe you can figure this out so quickly, but not your colleagues. Or maybe it could be the other way around. The thing is you have to work together somehow. If you're good, you're not always good. So you have to share, learn to share and be patient.